everybody, welcome to another video. My name is Andrea Gumal from Creative Creations and I'm so glad you popped in and to check out this video. Today we are going to create this cute, adorable little um, Halloween witch or witch girl. Um, it's not actually a canvas, it's a piece of cardboard. But yeah, piece of canvas art or cardboard art or whatever you want to call it, this wall hanger or door hanger or um, yeah, whatever type of name you want to give that child. Um, so this uh, is what we'll be creating together today using lots of mixed media in the background, acrylic paints, texture pastes, glitter pastes, um, uh, boo, sparkling paints, uh, all that jazz and then we will stamp the cute little witch girl here which is my own design um, but you can of course um, grab the stamp set or use another stamp in your collection which way ever to create something similar to this I did a little bit of die cutting here with those leaves and yeah I definitely had lots of fun creating this, so I hope you will enjoy this tutorial. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask um, down there. Leave a comment and I'm happy to help, I'm happy to answer. And other than that, I think we will just get started right away. Okay, so I will start on this sheet of um, cardstock or cardboard. This is just like the wrapping from a cardboard box. And I just tear this and actually the more ragged and the more stressed it looks the better so I try to have as much of the corrugated core visible as possible then I have another piece here which I will just layer on top just for a first um, base layer of texture and I'm just using some heavy weight gel medium here to apply this and I will need more so I'm gonna add this to my palette so once I got everything covered more or less I'll just put this right on top here. For a first layer of texture and then I will grab some tissue paper or some wrapping paper. Just something to like Crinkle up for some additional texture, and I'm gonna apply this over here to the side. Just down like that, adding a good amount of gel medium to hold everything in place but you don't want to like completely press it down because you definitely want this dimension and texture on here like this looks good to me so next I have some wooden embellishments here, some tiny wood slices and some autumn leaves and I'm also going to add some of those. Smaller one and maybe a third one somewhere down here. So that this kind of overlaps a little just about like that yep I like it and maybe I'm not even sure about the autumn leaf because I still want to leave enough space for my little Halloween witch to go on here later on okay 
So let's see. Yeah, maybe I can add this over here to the side. Just really making sure that I add a good amount because I don't mind like the glue squishing out, squishing out. <laughs> What's uh, important for me right now is uh, the texture of all those different elements. Just about like this. Okay, it looks good to me. So this wall, obviously because of a thick layer of glue, will take a while to dry, so you want to leave it maybe overnight, or at least for an hour, one and a half hour, until it's dry to the touch and not moving around anymore. The different elements are not moving around anymore because um, once we apply the next layer, you definitely want the underneath layer to be nice and dry. All right. So once everything is dry, actually the next step is to cover everything with an even thick layer of um, yeah of color of paint of acrylic paint. And um, as you can see, I started out with some white acrylic paint. However, <laughs> uh, I kind of made up my mind. Um, so in the next step, you will see me covering the whole surface with a black color because I decided that black would be a better choice for the theme of this piece. Yeah, now that this is dry, <laughs> I kind of made up my mind um, <laughs> while looking at this, while it dried. Um, I kind of decided that, or I kind of thought about the, the color combination that I want to go into and for Halloween. Uh, actually, I think it would look cooler to have a black base and then go in with a little bit of uh, some... Uh, vibrant orange and some purple so um, what I will do <laughs> now that I've nicely covered this with white but anyway I will just <laughs> grab some good old black <laughs> and go over it yeah and cover it all with black so yeah why not I mean <laughs> I only just added like two or three layers of white and now I'm going over it with black but anyway, that's <laughs> that's part of the fun of art. You can just um, do whatever you want and you can make up your mind as you go. Like, no rules, no right, no wrong. And I'm actually glad that this kind of came to mind before I continued on the background because then it would have been a little more difficult to do this. So anyways, now I'm covering it in black and with black quite obviously you just need one layer because black usually covers pretty good, especially now since I have <laughs> already like two layers of white on here. Whoopsie daisy. Um, yeah, so just applying this black and then this will need some dry time again. So I'll be back. Alright, so this is all nicely covered in black <laughs> and I didn't made up my mind again. I'm gonna stick with the black, so I'm grabbing a palette here and some acrylic paints like a purple. Then I have this Royal Flash which is just like a acrylic based paint with some nice shimmer and sparkle effect in it. Um, and I, I'm not sure if I'm going to add some of the orange, maybe as a finishing touch or as some splatters, but I think for now I'm going to stick with the purple. I think, for now. <laughs> so just some of the purple and some of the iridescent purple. And what I'm gonna do for now is I'm gonna mix this with a good amount of water. Because I want like a really watery acrylic mix here. And of course, again, I used way too much paint. <laughs> and then I'm just adding it 
into my project. First just dabbing it on. And I kind of want to use lots of water because I didn't want I don't want to like uh, paint it on but um, I kind of really wanted to like float around um, giving me like a little bit of a watercolor look. Not putting it everywhere. Definitely want to keep a little bit of the black, however. Just about like that. Adding a little more water here. Yeah, and I think I like it for now. So I'm gonna let this dry. This will of course take a while because again it's like super super liquid. Okay, so this is dry. And uh, next thing I wanna add a little bit of uh, silver embossing to the back here just um, a little bit of a random background pattern design so I thought this stamp would be pretty cool for it because it looks like, like an old I don't know magical book an old witch book so this is actually pretty pretty good uh, stamp for that let me just check the direction okay perfect so I will just ink my stem and I'm really not going for like the perfect stamp print on here but more for a little bit of like loose texture okay so I'm not using like an acrylic block or anything just stamping it on then sprinkling some embossing powder over it. So let's get this into another corner here. Maybe a little bit over here as well. Just like that. And maybe also on the little wooden slices here. Just a little bit of the texture. Like this. I'm going to shake that off. And I don't mind if it gets like stuck in some other areas because in this case this just gives me some additional texture here. Like that. So let me just get that embossing powder back. Back to where it belongs. And then I'm gonna go in um, and use my heat gun. All right, so next thing I'm gonna use a little bit of white acrylic paint. Um, again, adding a good amount of water here. Because I want it a little more liquid. Just about like that. And then I will just go ahead and add some white splatters here, some larger ones. Like this. So this kind of looks a little bit like a night sky 
really cute. Okay, now I put that aside to dry and uh, next thing I'm gonna stamp my little witch girl. And um, usually I'm just using a normal acrylic block, however I figured if you're stamping on a, um, on a cold pressed watercolor paper with lots of texture on the surface, um, a stamping tool like this comes really handy because you can um, re-ink your stamps if needed. And this one's new so it's still pretty sticky. So let me just put it somewhere and I'm also gonna stamp the other items already. That is it, so I'm going to flip that over, get it onto my sheet here, and then I'm going to ink that using some black archival ink. I'm just going to flip that over. Give it a good pressure here. And I can lift that back up. And I will definitely need or want a little bit more black here in the face. So I'll just go back in to get a, a really nice juicy black print. And you can just Go over it one more time. There you go, and you have that really nice, juicy, dark, rich black <laughs> print, which I really love. Um, again, normally on a smooth uh, cardstock or smooth paper, uh, that works pretty well, but uh, especially on a rough texture paper like this, watercolor paper, sometimes the first print is like a little dull, a little grayish, um, so that's that's not what I want, that's what I want to <laughs> say. So this tool comes like really, really handy. Yeah, and then I'm going in with my watercolors and uh, aqua brush, aqua brushes pentel acro brushes, my favorites, and I'll just um, go in and add some color, just a little bit of a nice skin color for the face. Basically just putting down the color into the areas that I want darkest and then just blending it with a clean brush like this slightly blending the edges softening that line and that's basically all it all it takes always make sure uh, to achieve those nice smooth edges to have, like to rotate your work, your paper, to have the like the tip of the brush pointing towards the darkest area, because this is the easiest and best way to get a nice smooth blend. Okay, and of course could just color in with your favorite medium or medium of choice for coloring stamped images like colored pencils or Copics, Copic markers. But again, my favorite is watercolor, so that's what I what I go with. That's what works best for me just because I really love this like smooth transition between the colors that you can achieve. 
um, with the watercolors. I know you can achieve that or similar results with um, the Copics, for example. But again, it's what you what you're used to, right? What you practice. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's add a little bit of color to that broom. Witch's broom, and again with watercolor, I start with the first base layer and then let it dry, and then go darker with the next layers. Because with watercolor, you kind of always have to work light to dark. That's one like the main <laughs> main difference between working with acrylics, for example. Always have to work light to dark and kind of achieve that depth and dimension with the layering of the different layers, quite obviously. <laughs> so let me uh, think, what kind of hair color should I give her? Um, maybe I'll go with some, some orange, why not? So again, starting with a light shade of orange here, then going darker with the next layers. And since I want to add some like splashes of orange to the canvas or to the cardboard, cardboard piece, um, I think that's a good repetition of color here um, with the orange in her hair. Alrighty. So let's see. Let's go. Start with a little bit of light bluish gray here for the head and the dress and everything. Again, starting with a very light base layer or base glaze here. Not worrying too much about shading just yet. Because we will get to that in the next layer or with the next layer. Once the first layer is dry, I'm gonna go back in with the second layer, going a little darker and just adding some additional shading here, some additional depth and dimension. And of course you could go in with like three, four, five layers however with um, a smaller image like this I basically stick with uh, two to three layers of color. It of course also depends on the type of paper that you work on. That's why I love to stamp on heavyweight watercolor paper because of course this just allows me to Um, go in with more layers than a normal cardstock would allow me to. So we have that little broom here. Let's add a little more brown to the stick. Then I want to add a little more pink here to the cheeks. Just a little bit. to the kitty cat here, adding a little more darkness here, blending it into the lighter area. And of course with an image like this where you will have like lots of like darkness, lots of black actually, because 
I want her little like dress to be black and the kitty cat, which is cat of course, has to be black. <laughs> um, so I basically um, don't work with a real black, so I'm not picking like a land black or like a real black from the pen. But I go with like a dark purple, a very dark purple and a very dark blue, like here for the cat for example, I'm working with this very very dark blue. And this way, uh, even though you go for like a more or less black look, <laughs> uh, with all the different elements on here, you will have um, a little bit of variation in the different types of black, that makes sense. <laughs> So um, if for her dress I go for a little bit like uh, of a, um, a purpley, dark purple, like a purpley shade of black. <laughs> and uh, for the cat for example, going for a little bit more of this really really dark blue. And this will bring a little bit of variation in the end, even though it all kind of looks blackish. If that makes sense. I hope. I hope so. And now let's go into the um, her little dress. And I'm just picking some purple here, dark purple, mixing a little bit of this dark blue in, and that's what I will use to darken the shadows here. So not really going for black, but for a very, very dark shade of, um, of purple, actually. So I will not completely go over the first layer, but I will kind of keep the, the first layer of a very light gray as my mid-tones. And we'll just go back in to add in like the shadows, okay? And then with a third layer I can go even more intense with the purple. Again, it just depends on how many layers you want to add and on how detailed you want to do the, like the layering. But basically, um, the more layers, um, the more dimension you will get in the end because this purple or the shading is actually what really makes the image come to life in the end and what really adds this depth and dimension to an actual, actually like two-dimensional image. And this layering, adding to the shadows and variations in the mid-tones is what kind of makes it come to life. So, I um, definitely want to go back into the hair here. And this time I will just add a little bit of this reddish brown. Just for the darkest shade of orange that I want to use on here. So this looks pretty good to me. Don't want to like overdo it. So I'm gonna stop here. 
All I will do now is grab my white paint marker. This is the white uh, Molotov paint marker. And what I will do is I will bring a little bit of white back into the eyes here. Add some teeny tiny like reflections to those lighter or lightest areas in the hair for example. Bring a little bit of white back into the game here maybe. So actually just going into those highlight areas and add a little bit more white back in where needed. Chin, tip of the nose, cheekbones. That looks pretty good to me, so I'm gonna stop here like that. I'm gonna go in and cut that out. Um, oh, it still needs a tiny bit of green up there. little like stem here in the pumpkins just a teeny tiny bit like that yeah love it so I'm gonna cut this out and I'm not gonna like super super fuzzy cut it but actually I'm gonna leave a tiny white border around it because again this helps to kind of lift it back off the background a little better because if you imagine this girl going on this um, you can if you like super super fuzzy color just along the black lines it might get a little lost in the background because the color combination is very very similar okay so I will leave a tiny white border around it to help it to kind of pop off the background a little all right so I'll just go back in and cut that out Just like a really tiny white border, not super large, just so that it is there, right? Just about like that. All right, so I cut that out. Okay, also those little words here. Just cut those into like tiny rectangles. So I'm gonna put that aside for now because I still want to work a little bit more on that background cardboard piece. Uh, first thing is I want to bring out the texture a little more. So all those details. And you can easily do that by just um, using like a little sponge or just a paper towel and just slightly rubbing it across the surface with um, any type of like metallic paste, metallic sheen. Um, so whatever you have, I'll be using this uh, gold modeling, whoopsie, modeling paste, there goes the lid. Um, and actually I know this is like a combination of gold and silver, but I think it, I kind of want to bring a little more warmth into it. So uh, I decided not to use any silver to kind of rub it, but um, rather this like warm gold here. 
just because um, I think again it will add a little more warmth and I kind of really want that like warm golden touch to it um, because we also have this in the pumpkins and in the girls hair so yeah just grabbing my paper towel slightly dabbing it in make sure you don't have like super or like too much on your little paper towel if you're afraid to have too much on it you can just dab it back off on another one and then I'll just go in and slightly rub this across the surface and you can already see how this kind of brings all this beautiful texture out and I definitely love the gold color in this case really glad I didn't go with um, with more silver just because it kind of really adds this um, yeah this warm touch this warm glow to it love that so I'll just go around everything making sure I bring all this beautiful texture out and you can see you really don't need a lot of this paste or color paint it just needs a tiny tiny <laughs> tiny a tiny teeny tiny bit to really just bring this bring this out and make this or definitely add this like depth to it okay so absolutely stunning love it I'll put that back into the jar so then another thing that uh, this is still missing for me is some glitter we have lots of like shine on here silver gold this pearlescent purple in the background but if you know me you know I love glitter <laughs> so this still needs a little bit of glitter yet I don't want to add super or an, another layer of like pattern to the background because there's already a lot going on so I decided to grab this iridescent uh, holographic crystal gel medium and in this case uh, this is drying completely clear so it only leaves me with the sparkle and glitter but with no additional color actually and that's exactly what I want right now so I'll just go ahead clean my palette knife and just jump right in and actually it doesn't matter which stencil I'm gonna use right now because it will not um, be like super super visible like the design the actual design that I'm stenciling through because of the transparency and the glitter so it will just add this glittery effect so I could even like go on the surface and just scrape it on like that wouldn't need a stencil even so either way it works just kind of adds this additional sparkle and glitter that I want Alrighty, so let's see, maybe just a tiny bit here. I know the stamp's going here, but... Uh, oh, this is like a super raised texture, love it. Just like that. I'm just scraping a little bit on here and there. And I think that's, that's good. Definitely should be, <laughs> should be enough glitter, yeah. But hey, there's never enough glitter. There's no such thing as enough glitter, right? Well, for me at least. <laughs> okay guys, so I'm gonna let this dry again. And then we'll come back. Okay, so I mentioned in the beginning that um, I also wanted to add this really fun and bright. <laughs> neon orange to it and I think this will really work pretty well on this because right now it's like all very moody and dark so I think some um, vibrant juicy orange splatters will definitely add to this so what I will do is I just added this to my palette here Again, I will add some 
water to it to make it a little more liquid. Like that. I'm gonna give it a good mix here. But I don't want it like too liquid because I still want the vibrancy of the paint of the color. So just kind of watering it down to a nice splashable consistency actually. Similar to this. <clears throat> and then all I will do is I'll splatter away. Shall we? Shall we? <laughs> okay, so just yeah, oh I love it. This is so cool. <laughs> This definitely adds to it. I love it. It's so fun. And this color in combination with the purple definitely goes very well for a Halloween -y themed project. So, wow, love it. So, I'm gonna put that palette aside again. <clears throat> This will again need a little bit of drying time, then I will attach a string so I can hang it up on the wall and attach my little girl and some additional embellishments. And so we are drawing closer to finishing this one and I actually really, really love it. Right, so next I grab my crocodile and I will just punch two holes here in the, in the top side to attach some uh, some like, uh, <laughs> ribbon some ribbon I kind of, sometimes I can think and work at the same time to attach some ribbon to hang this to be able to hang this um, somewhere on the wall or I'll just see this is more or less even. So, yeah, looks good. So I will just, I have some like um, beautiful vintage lace here, which I thought would be pretty cute on this. So I'll just thread this through the holes front to back. Just measure the length. So I will just go ahead and tie a knot here in the back so that it's not flipping back through the hole. Like that. There we go, getting rid of the excess length. And yep. Yeah. So I'm ready to hang this. I have this attached. And now let's finish this off. Let me just check where I want things to go. Again, I have my cute little witch girl here, the pumpkins. The pumpkins. Um, I also uh, did cut out some adorable little fall leaves just out of watercolor paper which I might attach here or there. Let's see this sign here, the witch is in, which I thought is pretty cute. I actually made two. This sign and the normal uh, writing here. But I think I will go for the sign. Um, and then I also printed, you say witch like it's a bad thing. Love that. So I might attach that somewhere as well. Or maybe those little words from the stamp set, spooky and you're magical. And um, what else did I want to go on here? That cute little owl, I'm not sure about that, maybe. Uh, but definitely that cute little um, broom, because a uh, witch needs a broom, right? So I think, I'm not even sure where to put this in, which way around, maybe this way. Um, ba -ba -ba. Let's see, yeah, this way. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to attach that first using some heavyweight gel medium and then just work my way through it. We'll put you in fast, 
fast forward, <laughs> fast forward one more time. Oh, this is the wrong one. See, I told you I can't work and think at the same time. Um, where's my gel medium? There it is. <laughs> Let me just get that back off. Um, so actually, I wanted to use my gel medium, not the acrylic medium. Um, yeah, and I will put it fast forward one more time. Oh my gosh, before <laughs> even more <laughs> boo boos happen here. Um, there you go. And uh, yeah, and then come back once I'm finished. band around her head and uh, yeah let me just take a look here like it I like it I love it actually yeah so calling it done let me take a look yeah, it's super cute, adorable, love how this turned out and I can't wait to hang this up on the wall. Maybe, I don't know, maybe in the entrance area of our apartment, on the wall, on the door maybe, I don't know. I will find a place, I'm pretty sure about that. <laughs> so I really had lots of fun doing this. Um, Yeah, not only because... I love Halloween, I love autumn, it's my favorite thing, my favorite season, my favorite time of year besides Christmas time. <laughs> um, yeah, so I had lots of fun, I hope it inspired you, I hope you enjoyed it. If you create something inspired by this, please tag me on social media, Creative Creations, um, so I can check it out and um, uh, yeah. Check it out and take a look. <laughs> um, again, if you want to grab the stamp set, the cute little witch, witch girl, it is in my shop on my website or on Etsy. It depends on where you prefer to order. Um, there are other ones too, Christmas themed ones and summer themed ones and other autumn themed ones. So if you want to check that out. And other than that, Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching guys. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and if you haven't done so yet please subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell right beside the subscribe button so that you will receive notifications in the future once I upload a new video. And yeah, so thanks for watching and talk to you all again soon. Bye!